And this is the Dyson Quill web series where we give you, the viewers, our views, opinions, topics, and discussions about everything role playing. First, today, I would like to say welcome back. Life kind of got in the way a little bit. New jobs, new houses, things. A new things studio. Happen. That's right, new studio, as you guys can see. A new studio where we are going to continue to bring you the best content that we can figure out. All right, and that's why today we've put our thinking caps together and we've brought you a top five. Today we're going to be talking about the top five most commonly encountered enemies. You fought them, you know them, you've seen them, you've tried to make friends with them but failed. Top five filler monsters. Filler monsters. These usually fall into the levels one through five. And these are things that a DM is like, well, they're going from point A to point B and i got to figure out... Something to kind of spice it up. I'm going to throw some type of enemy at them. Oh, well, let's just go with blah. Or let's just use blah. I've done that before. That's an easy one. And it has been done before to the point where I think it's been overused. And so we're going to do something a little different with this top five. And we're going to offer an alternative, possibly, to these filler monsters. Something that isn't always used to add a little bit of personality, a little bit of individuality, and a little bit of flair to your game. That being said, we're going to start out with number, number one. one! Goblins! Goblins! We know them. We have fought them by the thousands and slaughtered them by the thousands. Little pointy teeth, green skin, pointy ears, sharp sticks. Little. Yep, little guys screaming obscenities in a language you can't understand. Flooding onto your campsite at night, attacking you on the roads, attacking your caravan trying to take all your stuff and do weird little things to you and your buddies. Um, it's happened every single quest almost has at least one goblin encounter in it. Um, there's other things in the forest, folks, that you guys can fight other than goblins. Um, and so I'd like to throw an alternative out there. And that alternative is going to be, and I know I'm going to butcher this name, but it's going to be the Kuatau. All right, the Kuatau are in every D&D edition that I've dealt with. Um, people just kind of gloss over that page. And it's these little toad guys, little frogmen. They're about the same size as goblins, about the same uh, challenge rating as goblins, use the same kind of technology as goblins. Um, but it's something a little different. Now you've got leaping aspect of it. You know, it's just, it's something. It looks different. It sounds different. Still the same, but it's different. And, and that's kind of the whole point of this. It brings a whole new dynamic to your encounters, finding something you've never seen before or rarely seen. Right. You know, and there's really not much more we can say about it. I mean, goblins. There's, there's other things in the forest, people. Not just goblins. Mm -hmm. So, moving on to... Number, number two! Bandits! Every single campaign, you've seen them over and over and over and over again. Without fail, while you're traveling down the road, the DM will ask you to roll a listen check. Pass or fail, a couple of bandits will step out from the bushes. Ask you to pay your toll, or try to extort you for your items. More than likely, you're gonna to try to fight them because they're lower level, probably the same level you are. With it being such a prevalent enemy type because it's so relatable because they're here in the real world as well, you know them as criminals and gangsters. Street gangs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see, you know, something I deal with or have to know about in real life in a game that I'm trying to use to escape real life. Way to get around that. What, why not um, a competing adventuring party? You're not the only adventuring party in this world. You know, you might be doing a contract for a local lord, but he may have hired other parties to attain the same goal. Yeah, you guys aren't the best. Yet. No, not yet. And, you know, this party you may come across may be on the other end of the alignment spectrum, and they may just find it more convenient to knock out the competition. More prone to nefarious dealings. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a rogue with a high enough diplomacy skill, you can actually convince them to work with you, which adds another layer of death to your encounter. Not everything has to be combat. It's still an encounter, but you could make it more interesting by trying to defend them first. Right, or you can do both. Have this competing party initially offer to help you out, split the loot, yada, 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 good to go. And then when it comes time to actually put coins on the table, they turn on you. With 
half the loot that they have gained through your dungeon delve. Mm-hmm. Um, so just something else to think about. Doesn't always have to be bandits, folks. Um, yeah, doesn't always have to be bandits. <laughs> That's all I got to say on that. Moving on, on. number three, rats. <laughs> rats in the basement. Rats is a common problem in our fantasy worlds and in almost every fantasy world. Everybody has a rat issue. Everybody's got these critters in their basements tearing up their stuff. And everybody wants somebody to take care of it. And nine times out of ten, that somebody is you. you. So, I don't know about you, but I'm tired of fighting rats. I'm really freaking tired of it. Especially as a first level thing. Yeah, I understand using rats is rats in the basement. It's an easy quest, easy money, easy way to teach the combat system if people aren't really familiar with it. But how about this for an alternative? An imp, through some way or another, makes its way into Grandma Josephine's basement. With an imp having access to some magical spells and the ability to fly, it adds another layer of challenge to it. A bit more. It gives you a nice little twist. And instead of, you know, breaking off and fighting each party member, fighting an individual rat, you're now forced to work together with your party to bring down a slightly more powerful monster. It also pans out to something a little bit more than that for the DM as well, as far as the story goes. Why is there an imp in Grandma Josephine's basement? What has she been doing? Who did she anger? Naughty old woman. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. So that's just another alternative to think about, and it's a great way for the players to kind of build that cohesion, you know, learn how things work, you know. How do I work with this cleric or this rogue or this ranger, this fighter, yada, yada, yada. Um... And it's just something you don't see every day, and that's kind of the point of this top five. Something you don't see every day. Moving on to something you do see every day. Number four! Skeletons! Every single dungeon you ever crawl into will have skeletons. Skeletons. You'll hear it coming from a mile away. They're bone rattling, as their jaws move up and down even in undeath. You're always going to fight a skeleton. They're an easy monster. I'm guilty of using them. He's guilty of using them. They're easy to fight. And you see them so often that you wonder how many people are actually dead versus the population of those that are alive. Right. Um, They get old. Every church and every city you have will have a graveyard. A lot of them will have an issue with an aspiring necromancer who's going to defile the dead and bring forth skeletal minions. Right. Uh, An alternative to that... Literally, literally any other undead. <laughs> it just use something else, people. The zombies exist too. Zombies, Same. whites, ghouls, phantoms, ghosts. Phantoms and ghosts can't be harmed with physical weapons, so you have to use magical means. If you don't have a magic user in the party, that adds an extra bit of challenge. Maybe they're there for a reason, and you can get rid of this ghost or phantom, Without having to go to blows. Maybe they need to be laid to rest properly. <coughs> Maybe they were they left something undone in the living world. In a couple of the camp or a couple of the additions there's something called a revenant. A revenant is an undead that maintains a portion of its soul, and it comes back for the sole specific purpose of taking out whoever killed him or her, or whoever wronged him or her. Now, here's a specialized type of undead that is specifically gunning it out for the party members. Something a little different, a little bit of a change of pace than the clicking skeletons. <laughs> Moving on to, to number, number five. five. Spiders. Spiders. They're creepy. They have a lot of legs. Too many eyes. They're in every single cave that the party members are going to go into. Um, there are other things in caves. Just you know, And, and it's something I keep saying. There's other things there doesn't always have to be spiders and it's an easy descriptive niche for the dm you know you see the webs on the walls desiccated corpses you know um large spider drops from the ceiling you know it always builds that ambience but the minute you say web everybody's like yeah fighting spiders again there's no more surprise to it if everyone knows what's coming because they've been through it so many times right be it video games movies or the last game that they played it's the last campaign they ran. It, yeah, they, hey, we fought spiders there, too. Um, so a couple alternatives for that one. 
myconids, ginormous sentient living fungi with their own culture and hierarchy. Usually using weapons of wood or quartz. Um, you could have myconid spellcasters, myconid um, warriors, shaman, just like your, just like a normal goblin tribe except fungi. All right, and there they've claimed this subterranean space as their own, and they're in the monster manual, third, fourth, fifth. They're in there. Yeah, they're in every single edition. Yet they're rarely ever used. They're a very unique enemy type. Yeah, and, and a fun, a uh, fun one too, because now you open up to all the other kind of fungal type creatures in there, and it's a completely different dungeon experience. Completely different than what we are expecting and what we're used to doing. Next, Crenshaws. My, how I hate Crenshaws. Crenshaws are also in the Monster Manual, the third, fourth, and fifth. Um, they're kind of like hyenas, and the thing about them is they have a particular musculature in the face that when they're intimidated or they're trying to intimidate, when they snarl, the skin and muscle tissue fold back, exposing the bear's skull. Um, and if you're really good at descriptive DMing, it's a great way to introduce a new filler monster um, that the players haven't dealt with and they haven't seen that could possibly be you know, something that's intimidating to them because you really want to try to get that emotional response from your players as well as the fun out of it as well. Um, and if you look at their stats, they're pretty easy to fight, to be honest. They're not that high level. It's just not many people use them. Um, so that's pretty much it for the top five and some alternatives. Take it how you want it. If you say, you know what, I don't care, I'm going to go with the status quo, it's just easier for me, fine, cool. That's great, bud keep at it. Um, as long as people are playing, we're going to keep doing what we do. Mm -hmm. But if you're like us and you kind of want to throw a little bit of extra flair, a little bit of customization, something different, take into consideration. Sit down and actually take a look at the Monster Manual. Look not just the things that you normally would jump to. Take a look at some of the things that people always gloss over. Well, with that being said, that's all we have for you today. Thank you for joining us yet again on another episode of Dice and Quill. So, make sure you like, share, subscribe to us on YouTube and our Facebook page as well, D20 and Friends. Still a growing community of friendly players, role players, where we talk about all sorts of different games and share a lot of memes. So, it's a fun place. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm Austin. And I'm Fundy. And this is The, the Dice and Quill. Quill. Stay nerdy, folks. Bye bye <laughs>